Hey, welcome back. This is going to be part two of our diff building uh, series. So we just got uh, uh, the diff um, that we had the cup prepared. We you know went through and uh, did the preparation, um, dry fitted everything, checked the lash. So now it's time to go ahead and assemble the diff like we're going to put it into the car. So uh, stand by and we'll get ready and we'll get everything put together for you. All right, thanks. So, now we build the diff. I wonder where my bolt went. So I did that rather messily. Is messily a word? I think it is. And what I'm going to do is take the gasket out. And I'm gonna use, just gonna use diff fluid. Um, dry gaskets are hard, stiff, right? So um, I like to try to, to soften them up a little bit. Um, what you'll find, what I tend to find at least, um, my opinion is what's happening is as the gasket absorbs the diff oil, the gasket will expand. And by expanding, it doesn't stay hard and firm. It gets soft. So you'll actually be able to tighten the, the four bolts just a little bit snugger once the gasket has absorbed the oil and it's softened up and expanded. So allowing it to kind of begin that process while I'm building the rest of the diff, hopefully um, will help to keep the spur gear or pinion gear just a little bit snugger throughout the early stages of the life of the diff. All right, so now we get to build the diff officially. So I'm gonna install my bearing. I'm gonna do the cup first. I use my tool and I've got a nice new tub of utter butter. I often use the syringe. I've got a, a big syringe of utter butter and I just use the tip of the syringe to um, to push up against the outdrive, but uh, the main thing that I'm looking to do is fill the groove in the outdrive with oil, and then get a light coat of oil on the remaining part of the shaft. But I want to make sure that I've got grease down into the groove to remain in there once I insert it into the cup or into the spur or ring and pinion, what have you. I don't want to put too much on there because I don't want it to um, to push out and get caked up on the outside of the bearing between the bearing and the, and the out drive. So I'm just slowly spinning the out drive in, allowing it to go in nice without pushing all the grease out and make sure that I get a good thorough coat of grease throughout. Okay, so now I've got the out drive in and I can tell it's greased up because it's, uh, it's like sticking in there real nice. So I'm going to put just a little dab of grease down in the bottom also where the O-ring goes. I'm put grease on the O-ring. You guys do this? What do you guys, what do you guys use for lube? When I'm rebuilding them, I just use the, the diff lube. But for the first time, I want to make sure there's all the stuff's brand brand new. It's all dry right now, so there's there's no residual lubrication left over. So rebuilding, 
I'm already protected. But building them the first time, um, you know, there's uh, there's a chance that the silicone oil, the diff fluid itself, can make these um, O rings swell up a little bit, just like in your shocks. Um, so I try to use the utter butter. And then on the back side of the shim that's going to go against the dry cup, right? There's no oil down in the cup, it's dry. So there's now grease between, oops, flipped it upside down. There's now grease between the shim and the cup. side of the cup. Okay. So now we're nice and greased up. And before I put any of the gears in, I'm going to fill it up with oil. Not all the way, but uh, just a little over halfway full with just raw diff fluid and the internal gears will take up the rest of the space in there it should come up to be about just about right uh, start out about halfway full drop the big sun gear down in the bottom make sure you get it on the pin down there pins and one nice assembly you guys saw that right okay, and I'm just kind of holding my finger over the top of the diff cup where the diff fluid is and I'm rotating <laughs> can you hear that dog that's funny if you can't hear it I apologize for bringing it up but I should let him in the house I guess but I don't want him to go inside and bark or something because everybody's asleep okay so the goal here is to allow fluid to soak into all the empty spaces and dry spots. Um, and the first time I build the diff two, I'll I'll add extra, like behind the moon gears, down into the square shafts. Put the top sun gear on. Hold my finger down, give it some pressure. Turn the bottom, okay? So let the gears work in there. Let the fluid settle into all those little cracks and crevices. Okay, and then when it feels like it's full, then I'll just wipe it off with my finger. I'm just looking to see if I see any voids or dry spots in there, and I don't. Um, it's nice, a nice flush, even layer of diff fluid right up to the top edge around the outsides of the of the uh, 
top sun gear. Okay, so now we repeat the greasing process. We put the bearing on, the spur gear so I don't forget. You guys ever smell butter butter? It does not smell anything like a cow. It smells like fruit. Anybody wonder what I have rubber bands on my pliers for? I got them on all my pliers. Pliers are, are these, pretty much all these little tiny pliers that you can get. They all have um, spring-loaded jaws, right? So I don't need to be working with the jaws an inch and a half or two inches apart because all the stuff that we're working on is really small. So I found it easier to just throw some... Uh, rubber bands on the handles and then I get to open the jaws as far as I want to open the jaws and as far as I need to open the jaws. So I have uh, also found that it's much easier to store the dang things when they are in a closed position rather than being popped open and trying to insert them into your toolbox in a certain compartment. They seem to fit much better when they are closed. We've got some silicone already on the gasket. Obviously it hasn't done its full job of curing, but uh, it will help speed up the process. But it is always something, you know, like we were talking about before with the dirty diff oil, um, that uh, the first time you build the diffs, you'll notice when you take the bolts out of, of the spur gear, pinion gear, they're not going to be quite as tight as, as what you'd expected. So what I do when I put it all together and I have the, the sun gear in the top already, I've wiped off the excess. I rotate the, the spur gear in the bottom and I line up the groove in the sun gear uh, to be between the bolt holes. And then I do the same thing with, with the pin. So they're lined up with each other and the bolt holes are lined up with each other and everything just drops right down and you're lined up and you're not chasing around trying to figure out where where the bolt holes are and i just use use the, the tip of these needle nose pliers just to kind of go in and if i have to move the gasket a little bit to get it lined up my tools too. Wrap them with this athletic tape <laughs> and then as you push down the tape eventually will start to slide down the handle. So look at my my poor two millimeter. The whole handle is exposed and the tape is all wadded up down there. All right there we have a diff and now if we hold it the way we had held it before, we can still feel the end play. Still feels nice and smooth. It's not notchy. There's no, uh, I mean, you guys can't hear anything, right? I mean, I'm right up by the mic, by the mic. Unless you hear the dog. Oh, no, I apologize. But that is a nice smooth diff. All right, one last step is I'm going to wipe this off real good. Could spray it with carb cleaner, but I don't want it to get on my bearings or anything. Um, what I do just to, to try to keep track of, of what I'm doing with different cars, and sometimes uh, we will have uh, an extra couple, two or three diffs built with different fluids, fluids in them to be able to change quickly and not have to rebuild a diff, but simply replace a diff. <clears throat> so I mark what fluid is in the diff right on the cup. So if you are 
changing out the diff fluid in a certain diff. And like if I were to take this from seven and, and go down to five, um, that's a permanent marker. It, it's not going to rub off with just a rag. Okay. Even if the rag has diff oil on it, the, the marker is going to stay on there. So the easiest thing that, that I found, I mean, carburetor cleaner, sure that works. Uh, but you know, in our pit area, we always have our bottle of, of fuel, um, ready to go down for the next run. So the, the nitro fuel actually works really well at taking the, uh, the permanent marker off so that you can put on the new number. And uh, I'm happy with that. So that feels really good. I'm excited to put this in the car and get her broke in, throw the oil out of it real soon, and uh, put some fresh oil in it and go racing. So, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions about anything, uh, let me know. But I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thanks. Bye. All right, guys. We got our diff done and assembled and ready to put into the car. So, we uh, went through part one and part two of our diff series. I uh, hope you don't mind me being a little long-winded. But uh, I feel it's better to, um, you know, to help you understand why I do some of the things that I do. Uh, you may not choose to do some of the things that I do, but at least I'm explaining to you, you know, what my thoughts are behind the process. And to me, that's a whole lot better than just saying, you know, hey, do this like this and do this, you know, this other way. Um, I, I choose to explain a little bit, so the video is going to be a little bit longer. But I hope you're okay with that. Um, if you like the video and the content that we're providing, somewhere up in here should be a, a button to subscribe. Just please click on that or any other means. And if you missed part one, or if you want to see some of our other videos, uh, somewhere over here should be some links, uh, some thumbnails for you to click on. So we appreciate you tuning in, and we look forward to talking to you next time, and hopefully we'll see you at a racetrack sometime soon. On behalf of Caspian Racing and Source Speed Bowl, Soron.